Hi, I'm Brian with the Tennessee Department of Education, and we're here to keep discussing changes and energy, two things that go hand in hand. This is a fourth grade lesson. It's the second half of a lesson that we began in lesson one. So in lesson one, we looked at some different things that changed, a flashlight and a fan. We even looked at grass. And here we're going to see some other examples of change, but what we're really going to talk about is how energy changes uh, along with this. So there's an idea that can be tricky. And the idea that can be tricky is saying that energy causes something to change, which isn't exactly correct. What's true is that one thing can cause another thing to change. But in order to cause a change, you have to have energy. So that's really the point that we want to show today is that if you are going to make a change, you have to have energy to do it. So you can make a change or we'll take a look, an example right now where a speaker causes a change. So you, I'm going to head over to the lab and show you the materials and we can see how a speaker can cause change as well. All right, so what we have here are some materials that we need in order to see how, how change is going to occur from energy. So the materials that we actually end up using are a balloon, some salt, and a cup. And what we do is we cut off a portion of the balloon and we stretch it over the top of the cup and then sprinkle some salt on top of the balloon. And after we do that, what we end up with is something that looks like this. Now, what we're going to look at is one type of change, and that is a change in the position of something. So in this case, we're going to change the position of these salt particles. And position is just a fancy way of saying where they're sitting. So we're going to move these salt particles from one place to another, and we're going to do that using sound. So I have a speaker here that's just a speaker on an iPhone, and I'm going to go ahead and play some music, and I want you to observe what happens. I'll pause this and show some different changes, some different variations, so that we can actually see how the change is occurring. All right. So here's the music. So I want you to notice that we can see a small number of salt crystals moving. If I place this a little more in the center, I can actually make the salt crystals move towards the speaker. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you that the salt crystals, because the sound is causing this, the motion, the salt crystals will move towards the sound.
so you can see a small amount of creep there where the salt crystals are moving towards the sound. And I encourage you to try this on your own and experiment with different speakers. One thing that I found is that if you're using a phone, if you hold the side of the phone that has the speaker up against the balloon surface, then the effect is very different than if you go to the opposite corner and you use the side of the phone or the corner of the phone that doesn't have the speaker. If you use the side that doesn't have the speaker, you see almost no change in the location of the salt. And if you use the side that does have the speaker, you can see the salt, the salt vibrate with the sound. So let's talk about energy changes here. The key idea is that in order to cause a change, something must have energy. So in this case, let's think about where the energy comes from. The salt crystals were the things that were moving. Their movement was caused by the phone. Now we know if the battery on the phone is dead, it can't play the sound. And if it can't play the sound, it's not going to cause the salt particles to move or the salt crystals to move. So again, the idea, if the phone has no energy, it can't make the salt move. All right, so let's take a look at this in a slightly different variation. Another type of change that we saw in our last example was a change due to turning on a flashlight. So I have that same flashlight here, and we see that if the flashlight is turned on, then it illuminates the surface. It produces light, and light is a way of moving energy from one place to another. Waves always move energy from one place to another. Now, there's some other changes here. Uh, we know that if the if the flashlight has no batteries, if I take a battery out of the flashlight, I have removed the energy. There's now there is no electrical energy inside of this. And so now if I turn it on, nothing happens. Now, when I say nothing happens, I'm talking about whether or not the light was turned on. If you're really listening carefully, you might notice that something does happen. You might be able to hear the click of the flashlight turning on and off. So sound is another way that energy can be moved around. In this case, when I press my finger down, I'm using energy from inside of my body. I have energy because I have some food to eat. And so I can press this button down and that produces sound. And sound is another way, just like light, that energy can be moved from one place to another. Today's lesson has us use a worksheet or an activity page. And this activity page has us look at a series of drawings labeled one, two, three, and four. And this is a surprise party, and we're, we're going to think about how energy changes and what types of energy change occur. So, the difference between picture one and picture two, picture one is setting our stage. We have a dark room. In picture two, we have the beginning of a change. What change do you think that is if you look to picture three? Well, it looks like someone is turning on the lights. So I want you to think for a moment, how has this system, how has this party, system is a fancy way of saying the setting or all of the parts, in this case the party, how does it change when the button is pressed? What are some changes that you see? 
Well, we know that that's a light switch. And a change that occurs when we press a light switch is that lights turn on. So light switches supply electrical energy to lights. What's another change? Maybe you thought of the change in the switch itself. When you press a light switch, you use some of your body's energy to change the position of the switch. Maybe you slide something upwards or maybe you flip the switch. So that's another change. Now we move on to picture three here. And picture three has some people inside of a room yelling surprise, blowing on noisemakers. There's a candle. So what types of energy change do we see here? You could probably list a number of these. I'm going to give you some time to think about this activity page and see if you can figure out what type of energy changes occur. All right. So some changes we see. Well, we see that there's noise now. Noise is made by the people or by the noise maker. In either case, we've seen that sound is vibration. And so in this case, making noises, yelling surprise, I'll take the people's energy and it uses the muscles in their diaphragm, the muscles in their upper part of their chest, along their rib cage to make sound using vocal cords, part that's inside of your throat. Maybe you can even feel your vocal cords vibrate if you touch your throat when you talk. There's also candle burning now. And it looks like someone's walked up to the door. So the candle burning is a change. And this person that walked to the door had to move their body. So that's another change. In picture four, what's changing here? It doesn't look like a whole lot. Let's think closely. This is a picture of a cake with a candle on top. The candle is lit. Try to imagine you're in that situation. Hey, Fong. I'm in the middle of recording. Welcome. I'm so sorry. I'm meant to. I'm it's so okay. Hey. hey, everybody. It's Miss Fong. I did not mean to be in this video. It's all right, Fong. Hang up now. <laughs> Bye, Fong. Bye. So, when we have our birthday cake, the birthday cake has the candle on top. The candle is burning. And that's releasing some heat. Just like light and sound, heat is a way that energy can be moved from one place to another. We also have wax melting. And the wax moves down. Something must be pushing the wax down. And the weight of it causes it to fall. So with all of this, we've seen a couple of different things, and I want to kind of gather all of our ideas together because we've looked at a lot of types of energy change, and we've looked at several different causes of energy change. And it's important to separate the changes from the way that the changes were caused. So let's think about some of the changes that we saw. Well, in this example, we saw that the lights were turned on. So I'm going to I'm going to narrow that change to say the room was light 
brighter, or I guess illuminated. Or lit up. And that was caused by electricity and transferred by light or moved by light. Another thing that we saw is the switch was turned on. And this was caused by a person and their energy. And that's a type of what's called chemical energy. It's energy from the food. So we're actually just going to leave that as food energy because we know that's where we get our energy from. And it was transferred or meaning and when we say transferred here, what we're saying is that the energy or the change in position, the switch went from a switch in the down position to a switch in the up position. That change in the position of the switch was caused by a push or a pull. So we have two different ways that we can transfer energy so far. We can transfer energy by light. We can transfer energy by pushing and pulling. We also have two different ways that we can store energy. Electricity is a way that energy can be stored. And food is a way that energy can be stored. So there's a difference between storing or holding energy and transferring energy. Now, when the room, when the, our guest entered their surprise party, what we also saw was the room became noisy. So we're just going to write noise. It got louder in the room. Now, this again was caused by people. And people get their energy from food. Now, in this case, at a really small level, it's a push or a pull. But we can also think of sound as a way of moving energy. Sound is a wave, and waves always move energy. So in this case... the energy was transferred by sound. So, food energy moved by sound. Our last example here, and I have to write it off the side because I'm losing space, is our candle that was burning. And the candle was caused by or the energy type that it was that it was storing up was another type of chemical energy and energy of particles same type of particles you think of when you think of gases or solids or liquids also the same as food energy really so this is caused by the chemicals and the energy was transferred by heating. So again, we have a way that we can store energy, chemical energy. That's a way that something can hold energy. Food energy is an example of chemical energy. And we can move energy by heating. 
so that main point for this lesson that we really want to emphasize is that in order for something to change or in order for something to cause a change, it has to have energy. As long as it has energy, it can make something else change. The ways that it can move its energy to something else are by lighting it or illuminating it. You can transfer energy to something else by pushing or pulling on it. Sound is a way that you can transfer energy to something else. Or you can transfer energy to something else by heating it up. Sometimes it might transfer energy to you by causing you to be heated up. When you go outside on a sunny day, the sun causes you to heat up. So we have differences between how you hold energy and how energy can be moved around. We really want to focus on how energy is moved around by either lighting, pushing or pulling, sound, or heat. We're going to continue to talk about energy changes, especially caused by pushes and pulls in our le next lessons. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon. So I want to give some examples where we could think about how energy transfer works in the real world. So what we have is a disc golf here, or a disc golf basket and disc golf disc. And let's try to think about how energy has changed in this example. So first of all, what's changed? Well, let's look at one change. Let's look at the change where the disc is moving and then is stopped. So let's think about changes. And we know that changes are caught or changes occur when energy transfers. So what type of transfers did we have involved here? Take a moment and think about that. Let's run down them. Did we have pushing and pulling? Well, we did. The disc pushed on the chain and the chain pushed back on the disc. So we know that the disc is pushed so that it stops. So one way that energy was transferred to change this motion of the disc from energy, moving energy to stop was pushing. Did we have light? Well, we can see there's light shining, but that light didn't cause energy to change in the disc. That light wasn't what stopped, to stopped the disc from moving. So we would not say that light was involved in energy transfer. Did we have heat? Not much, not enough for us to talk about here. Did we have sound? Well, certainly. So some of the energy of motion of the disc became sound energy as the chains were rattled when the disc flew into the basket. Now, I don't know how well that showed up, but what we have here is a glow-in-the-dark shirt. And maybe you've seen glow-in-the-dark, and you know that glow-in-the-dark becomes visible when it's dark. And so that's another type of energy change. Let's take a moment, just like last time, let's think about what type of energy transfer is involved when a glow-in-the-dark shirt glows, or the real, the science term here is phosphoresces. Running down our list, there's not pushing or pulling involved. There is energy being transferred through light, just like the last example with the disc golf, there's probably not a whole lot of heat. And there's no sound, so vibrating wouldn't be relevant. So glow in the dark is energy transfer. Now, where or how does that energy transfer? Well, energy transfers from the shirt out to the room, out to space. So it causes light to be present in the room. So that's another example of energy transfers. What about our last example here? We had some motion energy, then we had to change. The motion energy went away. Well, let's think about what might have happened here. Did we have pushing and pulling? Well, the bike has a brake down here, and there's a pushing and pulling where the brake pad pushes up against this wheel and stops it. So yeah, there's a pushing and pulling. Was there light? 
No, there was no light. Was there heat? Not much in this example. Maybe if we were using the brakes for a long time, maybe you've ever been around the front wheel of a car where the brakes have been on or you've seen brake smoke, we know that heat can build up. Sound? Yeah, there's a small amount of sound and vibration. I could feel the vibration when I squeeze the brake pedal, or brake lever rather. So, there are examples all around you of pushing and pulling for energy transfer, light being created or emitted for energy transfer, things heating up or being heated, and sound or vibrations. See if you can come up with some additional examples on your own of how energy or places where energy is transferred and list what type of transfers are occurring.